For more physics related videos, please subscribe. Welcome to the Physics Almanac. In today's video, we're going to figure out how far away is the horizon. I've rated the physics level in this video as easiest, as all that's needed is some basic geometry typically taught in grade school. I say typically taught, but often forgotten. So we'll go over it as we go along. For this video, we're going to assume that the person looking at the horizon is standing at the same elevation as the horizon. So this would be like a person standing on the beach looking out at the horizon over the sea. This matters because if you're at a different elevation, then the distance to the horizon will be different. So if you're higher up, say you're on a hill or a mountain, you can see further along the Earth's surface. So to start off, let's draw a diagram of the situation. If this is the Earth, and you're standing on the Earth, you will be standing a distance r, which is the radius of the Earth, away from the center of the Earth. When you look out at the horizon, the horizon will be the point at which your line of sight is tangential to the surface of the Earth. And the distance to the horizon will be this arc length along the surface of the Earth, which I'm calling d. Now when you're looking at the horizon, it feels like you're looking straight out. But actually, you're slightly looking down by an angle, which I'm going to call theta. In this diagram, this angle is grossly exaggerated because the person I've drawn is enormous. But in reality, this angle theta is very small. I'm now going to draw a line from the horizon to the center of the Earth. And this line will also have a length r, and it will be perpendicular to the line of sight. If I then extend the first radius to the height of the person, or more specifically, the height of the person's eyes, which I'm going to call h, I now have a right triangle with a hypotenuse of length r plus h, and one leg will have length r. Now let's find the angle between this leg and the hypotenuse. Notice that the dotted line and the hypotenuse are perpendicular from one another. This means that our angle is also equal to theta. Now if you've seen my video on Albinoni's method for measuring the radius of the Earth, you'll recognize this diagram. It's the exact same geometry, and from this triangle we can find the radius of the Earth if you know the height h and the angle theta. This is what's so great about Albiruni's method. You have one experiment that will give you both the radius of the Earth and the distance to the horizon. Well, at least in principle. In practice, it'd be very difficult to do this with one experiment. This is because if h is the height of a person, theta will be so small that it will be very difficult to measure it accurately. In Albiruni's experiment, he took h to be the height of a mountain. And even in that case, theta was very small and required a very precise measurement. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to take the radius of the Earth to be given. We already know it ahead of time. Since the distance to the horizon d is just an arc length, by the definition of an angle, we have that this distance is the radius of the Earth times theta. But as I said, theta is very difficult to measure if h is only the height of a person. So we have to figure out what theta is. Taking a look at this triangle, the hypotenuse r plus h divided by r is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent, so that's going to equal the secant of theta, which is 1 over cosine theta. So we have that r plus h divided by r equals secant theta. At this point, you could just plug r and h into a calculator and solve for theta, and then plug that back into our distance formula. But what fun is it to plug into a calculator? So let's try to solve this without a calculator. Because theta is small, it turns out that secant theta can be very well approximated as being 1 plus theta squared divided by 2. You may recognize this as a Taylor expansion of secant theta. If you don't know what a Taylor expansion is, you can just take this approximation to be a given. So r plus h divided by r is equal to 1 plus h over r, and that's going to be equal to 1 plus theta squared over 2. Solving for theta gives us that theta is equal to the square root of 2h over r. If you're finding this video interesting so far, please like and subscribe, and maybe share it with a few friends. We can now plug this into our expression for d to get that the distance to the horizon is equal to the square root of 2 times the radius of the Earth times the height h. The average radius of the Earth is a little over 6,000 kilometers, and I'm going to take the average height of a person, or actually the average height of a person's eyes to be about 1.6 meters. Plugging the numbers in, 
This gives us that the distance to the horizon is 4.5 kilometers or 2.8 miles. Now this is the distance to the horizon if you're standing on the beach. But we can also find the distance to the horizon for some general height h above the horizon. And in that case we get that the distance to the horizon is about 3.6 kilometers times the square root of h if h is measured in meters or 1.2 miles times the square root of h if h is measured in feet. Except that there's a slight problem in our method. If we redraw our diagram, we assumed here that light will travel from the horizon in a straight line to our eye. But actually, light doesn't travel in straight lines. Light travels according to Fermat's principle, which says that it will take the path of least time. A straight line is the path of least distance, and the two may not be the same. And in our case, because the Earth is surrounded by an atmosphere, whose density decreases with height, the speed of light is faster at higher elevations. And so that means that in order to minimize time, light would prefer to spend more of its trajectory at higher elevations where it can go faster. This is like if you have to drive somewhere, the most direct path might be surface streets, but the speed limit is slow there. So it might be faster to go out of your way, get on the highway where the speed limit is higher, and you'll actually get there in less time even though you've traveled a longer distance. Of course, if the highway is too far away, the faster speed on the highway doesn't compensate for the extra time it takes just to get to the highway. And so similarly with light, it would like to travel at higher elevations where it can go faster, but if it goes too far out of the way, say if it goes too high up in elevation, even though it can go faster, it's going to start to take longer again because of the extra distance it's traveled. So as a result, light will not travel in a straight line, but instead it will travel along a special curve that minimizes the time. And notice that this implies that the point that we labeled as the horizon is no longer the horizon because light is not traveling tangentially to the surface of the Earth at this point. Instead, the actual horizon will be further along the Earth's surface. Light will bend past the horizon, or I should say bend around the surface of the Earth, an extra distance that we haven't accounted for, which I've drawn in green. Now again, if you've seen my video on Albinoni's method for measuring the radius of the Earth, you'll know that this was also a problem in Albinoni's method, because it resulted in the angle at which we're looking at when we're looking at the horizon to not be theta, but to be a slightly smaller angle, which I'm calling alpha. So to find this extra distance in green, we have to add this arc length, meaning we have to add an angle delta theta to our original angle theta. And now the distance of the horizon will be the radius of the Earth times theta plus delta theta. So now we have to figure out what delta theta is. And I'm going to do that in the next video. So if you enjoyed this video, if you made it this far, please like and subscribe, and be sure to click the bell to be notified for future videos. Thanks for watching.